As someone that's been using this mini PC for a while now, I can confidently say that it has exceeded my expectations in terms of performance and design. My unit came pre-installed with Windows 11, powered by an i3-1215U processor, 16 gigs of LPDDR5 RAM, and a 512 M2 drive, a combination that makes it a formidable mini PC for gaming. Inside the box I didn't find anything particularly noteworthy aside from the charger and an expansion cable that provides SATA and power connections for an additional 2.5 inch drive. It's great to see that the core box has some expandability options like this. Taking a closer look at the core box we can see that the top of the unit features a metal aluminum plate which is quite sturdy. Overall the unit has pretty impressive build quality and I'm quite happy with how it feels. Moving to the back of the unit, we can find an array of ports including the DC power port for USB 3.0 ports, an HDMI and display port, and a gigabit ethernet jack, and a Type-C USB 4.0 plug. The USB 4.0 is also Thunderbolt compatible and can power the unit with a 65 or 100 watt charger. We also have the microphone and headphone jack on the back. The unit also has some impressive vents on the sides in the bottom of the unit for some air intake. These vents should help keep the unit cool which is pretty important as a lot of these mini PCs can get pretty hot under heavy use. In addition to the vents on the bottom, the unit also has some rubber feet which should improve the airflow and keep the unit in place on your desk. Now let's take a closer look at the internals of the Corebox i3. Once inside the unit we can see a large heatsink on the CPU as well as a decent sized fan to keep it cool. We can also see a proprietary Wi-Fi card and the M2 drive. With that extra cable we had earlier in the package, we can install that extra 2.5 inch drive using the power connection here and one of the SATA connections just off to the side of the M2 drive. On the top of the bottom plate we can see a 2.5 inch expansion bay where we can add an additional drive for extra storage if we need to later. Taking off the other side panel doesn't reveal anything particularly interesting so we can move on and start the mini PC and see it in action. Let's start with the boot test and see how quick it starts up. This is a cold boot with Windows set up and a few games already installed along with some minimal software such as an antivirus program. After timing it we can see that it takes just over 17 seconds to start up which is a pretty impressive result. Let's run a quick Geekbench test on the Corebox's i3 CPU to see how it stacks up against the competition. This test may take a little while to complete so I'll speed up the video for the sake of time. Now that the test is finished, we can see that the core box's i3 single core score is just over 1500, while the multi core score just passes 6300. These are overall really impressive scores, especially considering it's coming within just a few points of other processors like the Ryzen 5600 and 5700G. This is also matching the i7-11700F and i5-11500 single thread performance. At first glance, the BIOS of the core box doesn't seem particularly special, but as soon as we press the escape key, we can access a few more options. You can find a lot of the full functionality of a regular BIOS here, including things like overclocking and TDP control. I've been testing some low wattage TDP configurations on the unit, but let's set it back to its stock configuration, which was 28 watts and 45 watts respectively. There's also a lot more options in the BIOS here for someone that wants to tinker with it a little bit more than I do. It's great to see a company like Chewy let customers take full advantage of their PCs, but if you don't know what you're doing here, don't change any of the settings as you can adversely affect your unit. To see how the Corebox's i3 handles cooling, I'll run the CPU-Z stress test for a while. From the testing it seems like the average temperatures are in the 50s with occasional spikes up to 71 or 72 degrees celsius. Despite these high temperatures the cooling system appears to be working well and the unit is able to maintain impressive clock speeds even under full load. It looks like the core box's i3 has a solid cooling system that can handle heavy load without issue. According to CPU-Z, this memory of the core box's i3 is working correctly and running at 4800 MHz. Windows also shows the memory functioning at correct speeds and additionally we can see that the memory is soldered on board as I've confirmed when I opened up the unit earlier. This also means that it's not upgradable or swappable if we need more memory in the future. 
While it's always nice to have the option to swap or upgrade memory, it's worth noting that the core box still has a generous 16 gigs of LPDDR5 RAM which should be sufficient for most users. Because the memory is soldered on board, I can't pull any specifications about each individual stick of memory, so we can only see what's available under the memory page here. In addition to providing information about the core box's memory, CPU-Z can also show us a number of other helpful details about the core box's i3 CPU. This includes information like process size, wattage, clock speeds, voltage, and much more. It also shows the CPU regularly boosting to 4 GHz, likely on those two performance cores. And if you're curious about it, here's the motherboard page information. Next up, I'll be testing the generic M2 drive that comes with the core box. Immediately after hitting start, I'm seeing some impressive write speeds of over 1.3 GB per second and some read speeds of over 1.5 GB per second. Based on this test, I don't think I'll be in a rush to swap this out anytime soon. Overall, it appears to be a solid and reliable drive for storing and accessing data. The unit comes equipped with a Wi-Fi 6 adapter. We see a maximum reported speed of 1.5 gigabytes per second, but my connection is topping out at 1.2, so the adapter appears to be performing well. It's worth noting that I've had good experience with Intel's AX201 card in the past, and it seems to be a reliable adapter in many units that I've used. To check the connection on the unit, I'm just going to run a quick internet speed test just to see how well it works. The results show a download speed of over 600 megabytes per second, which is pretty impressive even if it falls short of the 1 gigabyte per second connection that I have here available. The upload speed test just sits at over 100 megabytes per second, exceeding the 100 megabyte per second upload that I have here available. My desktop that sits on the same Wi-Fi network gets exactly the same upload and download speeds either way, so I'm pretty happy with the results of this test. 4K video playback on YouTube works great and I don't have any hitches or any stutters while playing the video. Out of the entire test, there was only one drop frame and this wasn't noticeable during playback. This would be great news for people that want to use this mini PC as a media machine or a home server as it should handle 4K video playback without any issues. I did also try 8K playback on YouTube and the unit handled it perfectly. Let's check out Cinebench next to see how it handles rendering tasks. I did speed up the video for this test as it can take quite a while to complete depending on the hardware available. As we can see, the Corebox i3 handles rendering pretty smoothly, and I have 8 cores available to help with the video editing tasks and rendering. Taking a look at the results of the Cinebench test on the i3, the single core score is extremely impressive, matching or even beating processors like the i7-1165G7. It even beats processors like the i7-7700K and the i9-9880H. In the multi-core score, we still see it beating the 1165G7, although it falls slightly behind the 7700K. While the single threaded performance still seems like this unit's strong point, its multi-core performance is still very impressive. If you want this unit for productivity tasks, I think you'll be pretty happy with it. Let's take a look at how the Corebox i3 handles gaming. First up is one of my favorite indie classics, CrossCode, and I'm happy to report that this game runs flawlessly with no issues. It barely needs 13 watts here of power to run at a smooth 60 frames per second. This is a pretty easy game to run though, so let's bump up the ante and try a harder game. Hades runs great at 720p, but we can see that it's bumping up the wattage to about 18, 17, 18 watts, which is a lot more than CrossCode was using. When we bump up the resolution to 1080p, Hades continues to run flawlessly with an average TDP usage of around 20 watts. Ori in the Will of the Wisps tends to be a little bit more CPU heavy as the graphics settings are improved. It can run 1080p low or 720p balanced. If you're playing on a smaller monitor under 32 inches, you could probably get away with 720p balance, but if you're playing on a TV, you might want to bump it up to 1080p low. This is the hardest to run by far, and we can see the processor peaking at 25 watts.
As you probably know by now, I'm a big Sega fan, so let's load up Sonic Generations on 1080p low and see how well it runs. There's a few slowdowns on this game, but they don't significantly impact the gameplay. Sonic Generations peaks at about 21 watts, and it runs pretty decent. Doom is a pretty tough game to run, but I was able to get it running smoothly with the options set to 720p, low, and 100% resolution scale. I couldn't get Doom Eternal running as it didn't have enough VRAM, but this one seems to work well. The Doom remake peaks at about 27 watts. Horizon Zero Dawn was the most challenging game to run on the core box. I was only able to get it playable using 720p, the lowest graphics settings, simple scaling, and a lock of 30fps. Even with the 1215U processor pushing over 30 watts, you can still enjoy a large portion of these, but you're going to be turning a lot of the graphics settings down to lowest and 720p with a hard cap of 30fps. In conclusion, the Corebox i3 is a powerful and capable mini PC that offers a lot of value for its price tag of $350 US at the time of making this video. Whether you're looking for a cheap gaming rig, a media box, server, or a decent desktop overall, the Corebox i3 is definitely worth considering. 